Welcome back to Fast Friday RC, and today I'm gonna to take you through the build process of the 114th scale Tamiya fuel tank trailer. Just look at this thing. I think this is the most realistic uh, semi-trailer that Tamiya produces for the North American marketplace. This is incredible. And I mean, when you look at the, the back of this, I mean, how realistic is that, right? I mean, this this is just so cool. And the fact that it's all metal, uh, well, mostly all metal, uh, it's, it's, it's just incredible. I love it. So I'm gonna do this video in parts. I, I decided with this one, I was going to uh, do a complete build and show you exactly step-by-step step, uh, what the instructions are, how I put it together, uh, and take you through that process. So you're gonna learn how to do certain things at certain stages. But I thought for the beginning of this video, I think there's a few things you should know right off the top. Right off the top. So one of them was liquid thread lock. Liquid thread lock is used throughout this kit. Uh, and I have to tell you, I'm not a fan of liquid thread lock. Uh, I don't like the idea of permanently locking yourself into something if you're not entirely sure how the build is gonna go. Um, in previous experience, uh, I have found that if you put some liquid thread lock on something and then later on realize you either forgot something or that you wanted to add something, you're kind of stuck. Um, it's and I just don't want to get into that and most people who are building these kits aren't going to want to trap themselves so I haven't. The only part that I've used liquid thread lock is on the frame itself there's these curved metal pieces that um, screw to the frame uh, which are going to actually hold the tank. I'm never going to change that so I thought well I'll liquid thread lock that. The rest of it I have not. Uh, another reason I don't do that is because they're showing you liquid thread lock through the, throughout the whole thing, I would rather build it in its entirety, know that it comes together as it should, and if I find I need to put liquid thread lock on, I'll do it later. Because I've already gone through the build process, I know what I'm going to find. So I just think liquid thread lock, use it sparingly unless you absolutely love the stuff and, and want to lock yourself in. It's just not my thing. Uh, two, the bumper. The bumper on the back with the lights. Uh, this happens in step seven of the instruction manual. And if you are intending on putting the light set onto this trailer, uh, I would suggest when it says attach to frame, do not. Because later on, you're gonna have to take it off again to be able to put those lights on. Um, so I would leave that off. Uh, in step 10, you will end up building and putting together the axles on the trailer. Uh, this is where you would want to put ball bearings and I would heavily suggest putting those ball bearings in at that stage because if you decide at a later date that you don't want to use the plastic ones the kit comes with, uh, you're going to go through quite the process of taking the suspension completely apart to actually get to the axles and put those bearings in. And since there's only eight, I would suggest just getting some, putting them in, and then you'd have some nice rolling wheels with your trailer. Now you've noticed that um, I, I painted the wheels, uh, the Tamiya logo, uh, with the white paint. I just think the wheels look super sharp, uh, you know, being able to see the wheels go round as opposed to it just being black. So I actually prefer it, so I did that. Um, one other thing you might consider when building this uh, trailer is getting yourselves some shock pliers. You can get those pretty much from any hobby store. Um, they look like this, um, but what you're able to do is at the very top of here, uh, you can put the uh, shock tower uh, and lock it in place firmly to be able to screw in the caps. Uh, I have in the past not had these and in this kit actually I ended up slightly scratching one of the shafts not a fan and so you can feel that it doesn't quite go in and out as nice um, I was trying it with pliers and I gripped them wrong and normally I've been okay with it but I didn't and I was kind of I don't know I was kicking myself for not doing it so I decided it was time to get some real shock pliers as soon as I got these the job of putting uh, shocks together 
was almost, I mean, it was so easy in comparison. So I would suggest getting these uh, because it'll work with this, but it's gonna work with all of your uh, other models that you might build as well. Um, the other one is step 15 of this, uh, when you're attaching the tank itself to the trailer, that was the hardest part I found of this entire build. I thought this came together actually quite nicely. But in order to put the tank on the frame, you have to go from up underneath to a screw that then gets screwed into the tank. Now, sounds simple enough, but you have no way to get leverage. Now, I have seen some people who have taken the tank, turned the whole thing upside down, but then you're resting all the weight on the tank itself. And I didn't want to do that. So that was a little bit more challenging. I, I found ways of, you know, taking the trailer, hanging it over the edge, coming up from under underneath, being able to screw it in while I had my arm all the way through the tank doing the bolts. But if, uh, you know, you could do it by having a little bit of help, somebody just holding the end while you screw that in. Um, it was really the only part that I found was a little bit more difficult. Uh, as a whole, I thought this trailer was coming, to go, coming together actually quite well. Now, the other part to that, and this is one of the reasons why I didn't want to flip it over. And again, I've seen people do it, but um, in the instruction manual, it talks about the fact that when you're screwing this down to the frame, you want to make sure that everything is exactly where it should be. Otherwise, when you go to tighten it, you could deform the tank. And I can see why, because, you know, it's got the, you know, because it's an oval shape, there is a somewhat of a flat spot at the bottom, not much, but there is. But if you don't have this perfectly in place and you just tighten it in, you're gonna, you're gonna bend the, the, the aluminum. So I made a point of putting in all of the screws, slowly tightening each as I went along. And then once I realized it was completely in place, then I screwed it down tight. So that's another thing just to watch out for when you get to the step of putting the tank on the trailer. Um, oh yes, this is an interesting thing. Uh, on the back, you'll notice that this trailer, this, this piece here is plastic, the ladder is plastic, but this metal piece here bolts onto another plastic bit and these bars, the handlebars, are metal as well. But they talk, they tell you to take the ladder, put it into the plastic holes, which you, you um, put a plastic piece there on step seven when you did the bumper. They fit into there and then you stick the other pieces on the inside the metal. I would suggest when you get to that step that you put the plastic ladder into the metal piece first, then put the piece into the holes because what I was finding was the plastic wasn't completely going into the metal that well, because the metal is a little tight, um, which is fine, that's what it's meant for, but it means you don't have any leverage. So it's easier to actually turn this upside down, put the, metal, uh, put the ladder inside those holes first, then put the bracket on and the ladder fitting into these two holes. That just made things a little easier, because uh, it was a bit weird um, trying to put pressure after putting it into plastic to plastic and then trying to shove plastic into metal, the you don't have the right leverage. So that's something I would suggest doing as well. Um, overall, uh, few things. I have a video that goes through the motorized support leg build on this. I also have a video that goes uh, around actually installing the lights themselves. So. One thing to just be aware of, if you are planning on installing any of those accessories, either the lights or the motorized support legs, do refer to the um, instruction manual for the trailer throughout the process. Because what I have w was finding was that I'd go to place something, then when I'm actually back to going to the, through the instruction manual to build the trailer, I've placed it wrong. Uh, because it doesn't say any of that in the motorized support legs instructions, for example. So just be aware that if you're installing either the lights or the legs, 
do refer to the trailer manual during that build just to make sure you're putting it in the right place. Word to the wise. Uh, and that, you know, other than that, those are the key things I found were just things that you needed to watch for when building this trailer. But otherwise, this has been a beaut to put together. I have absolutely loved every minute of it, and I'm sure you will too. Um, and like I said, if you're wanting to install the motorized support legs or the lights, they are there. Um, the other two videos that I made, so you, you get a more detailed look. There's two other things I want to point out with this trailer. Uh, one, you may have noticed that you don't see any decals in terms of what's the company this tanker trailer is with. Is it Chevron? Is it Shell? Is it Texaco? Is it Petrocan? I don't have any of those on there. Uh, I decided in the build process, this thing just looks so sharp, I don't want to cover it up with any decals. Now, I may change my mind at a later date, but for now, I'm leaving it as stainless steel. I, I mean, I just think this looks incredible. Uh, and in the sun, it's just shine. So I'm leaving it blank. All of this is stock, um, except for the motorized uh, support legs and the uh, lights. However, I've added one little detail, and I'm sure you saw it a minute ago, but I'm gonna point it out to you. You may see the little ladies on the, on the mud flaps. Well, I've put those on for, <laughs> couple of reasons I guess but um, just I as a kid I remember traveling down the the five heading down to California uh, did that trip a fair bit and you'd see those ladies on every semi practically whether it be the trailer or whether it be the tractor truck itself and to me it's just a memory thing that takes me down the five heading to California and when I found out that uh, you could get them for this I just had to get them. Uh, so I've put them on and I mean the trailer to me looks even more realistic now with those on uh, and I may have to get some more for the trucks themselves because uh, I just I just think they look so so cool on there. Uh, so that's why they're there and that is the only addition uh, that I've added to this that is is not stock. So now what we'll do is I'm gonna take you through that build process from start to finish. I go through each um, instruction separately so you can see what I'm doing. Uh, and hopefully this helps you on your fuel tank trailer build. So let's get to the build. <laughs> 